Welcome to the Alaska Weather Show. I'm meteorologist Peter Chan coming to you from the National Weather Service on this Friday evening, December 3rd, 2021. And as always, if you'd like additional weather information, you can go to weather.gov forward slash Alaska. There's a lot of things to find there. Weather.gov by itself will give you a map of the entire United States, and you can click on that and find out the forecast and any watches and warnings for anywhere in the country. And if you have any other things you wish to share with me, have any questions or interesting observations or photos, you can reach me at peter.chan at noaa.gov. Well, here are the weather headlines. That windy front has made impact along the west coast uh, this afternoon. Uh, snow and blowing snow, blizzard conditions, uh, those are going to be coming down in some areas this evening and overnight early Saturday morning. Meanwhile, along the Alcan border, we have a large Arctic high pressure system with a central pressure higher than 1040 millibars and it's creating some bitter cold, some of the coldest air we've seen so far of the season. And some of the normally cold spots could be down around 50 below come early Saturday morning. We are also at a point today is new moon, so it means a dark sky. And we do have a comet. The best comet of 2021 is visible in the eastern sky before daybreak. Comet Leonard can be located uh, between the Big Dipper and the star Arcturus in the eastern sky. And you need a pair of binoculars because otherwise to the naked eye it just looks like a little fuzzball. And the next weather news, as I've been highlighting here much of this week, we're expecting a larger, more widespread winter storm with heavy snows, wind, blizzard conditions impacting the west later Saturday night into Sunday, spreading further inland by Monday. So this is going to be a major weather maker for the western and southwestern parts of the state, even getting up into south central areas as we head into Monday. So let's look at what we got out there now in Fort Yukon, bitter cold, 45 below this afternoon, and I'll see temperatures tonight down near 50 below in some of the normally cold spots there in the Yukon Flats. Meanwhile, on the west side of the state, southwest there, the lower Yukon uh, Delta, Scammon Bay, blizzard conditions. As that front moved on through, it produced some wind gust up near 50 miles an hour, along with some heavier snow squalls, and that's what you get, blizzard conditions, but things are improving there at Scammon Bay and should be so at least for a while until uh, Saturday night and certainly by Sunday morning we expect blizzard conditions again there. So here is the hazards weather map. We have a winter storm warning still in effect for uh, the kind of middle, south middle part of the panhandle including uh, cake on over toward uh, uh, Petersburg and Petersburg has picked up at least six inches of snow. There have been some heavier snow showers the past uh, day or so down there in, impacting the southern portion of the panhandle and those are going to continue to wind down this evening. The winter storm warning in effect till nine o'clock this Friday evening and then back out to the west uh, you can see over toward uh, north of Hooper Bay there including uh, Scammon Bay, the uh, lower Yukon uh, Delta area is under a blizzard warning until 9 p.m. this Friday evening, as is St. Lawrence, but conditions are going to start to improve if they already haven't. And then further up the coast, uh, the western and uh, northwestern uh, coastline of the Seward Peninsula is under a blizzard warning through early uh, Saturday morning, as is uh, portions of uh, Norton Sound coast on up to just uh, Point Hope. Inland, we have a, a wind chill warning in effect for the areas east of Kotzebue, including Ambler, where wind chills with the strong gusty winds with the front uh, dropping wind chills as cold as 50 below. And then further east, the uh, east central interior, including the Alaska Range, upper Tanana Valley, are expected to see some drainage winds, what we call catabatic winds, off the Alaska Range, which will enhance those wind chills that could be as low as 50 below or so here for tonight, and that includes talk as well as north waves. So let's look at the satellite imagery. We had some technical issues today. It was real fun putting the show together with that in mind, but I've had the experience dealing with that kind of stuff before, so we'll make it work. Here's the satellite image without anything on it. You can see that circular cloud pattern over the Gulf. That is uh, the low pressure that continues to pump those snow showers up into the southern panhandle. There's another low and more moisture further south in the North Pacific there, southeast of the Gulf. And then to the west, you can see that strand of clouds running from uh, the Chukchi Sea all the way through the west coast down across the Alaska Peninsula. And that is the front that is pushed into uh, the west coast today, producing uh, those strong gusty winds, blizzard conditions at times. 
And then back out over the bearing, you see kind of the broken mottled cloud pattern. Those are some scattered areas of snow showers, uh, especially there uh, out over the uh, northern portion, as well as extending down there to just north of the tip of the Alaska Peninsula and the eastern Aleutians. But the next weather system, the main weather player for late this weekend, is just some of those clouds are just beginning to come into the uh, middle and lower left portion of your screen. When I overlay the weather map and put the fronts and highs and everything, you'll see massive high pressure there in the Yukon along the LKN border. Uh, central pressure up around 1045 millibars. That's going to bring the bitter cold to those areas. And then south we have a few weaker low pressure systems uh, from the Gulf of Alaska back to along the uh, Alaskan Peninsula. That, that low that's developing along the front uh, near the Alaska Peninsula is going to move into the southwest Gulf and just be a weaker low as we go into tomorrow. But the front will continue to work its way into the western and southwest interior as we go through uh, late tonight and during the day on Saturday. But it will weaken, but it will still have some uh, snow with it. Nothing especially as heavy as maybe earlier today, but nevertheless, it'll be there. The high remains entrenched over the Yukon, keeping the cold weather going across uh, the eastern uh, portion of the state and into northwest Canada. Then you can see the low emerging out there uh, from the far western uh, bearing. Uh, south of the uh, Japan coast and uh, along the Kamchatka coastline. And that low will deepen and fling a lot of moisture northeastward up into the Bering and then eventually into the west and southwestern coast of the state later Saturday into Sunday morning. Likely will produce blizzard conditions, so stay tuned. There are going to be winter storm watches, winter storm warnings, blizzard warnings coming out with this thing uh, certainly by tomorrow and into Sunday morning. Otherwise, Sunday, we watch that uh, strong frontal system pushing inland with the center of low there out over eastern Russia near the Bering Strait. And that system will continue to press inland as we head through the day on Monday. Here's the low temperatures. Below freezing across the panhandle, really below zero, 28, 30 below in some areas around uh, the Copper River Basin and over toward McGrath. And then Saturday afternoon, single digits uh, for areas away from the coastline. The lower uh, portion of the panhandle getting in the mid 30s and then not quite as cold Sunday morning. Uh, middle teens below zero there at McGrath and maybe still near 20 below at Glen Allen. And Sunday afternoon highs will begin to come up to the west. Uh, try to get readings back up uh, above 20 along and west and southwest of the Alaska Peninsula. Look at the lows come Saturday morning. Uh, Fort Yukon Arctic Village uh, 45 to near 50 below in some of the coldest spots. Uh, temperatures have come up along the Seward Peninsula into the single digits above zero, 19 there at Savunga. And then high temperature Saturday afternoon, still well below zero there, Yukon Flats down toward Northway, 25 to 35 below daytime temperatures. But along uh, the northwest and west coast, look for temperatures rising up into the teens. And Sunday morning lows still could be well down into that uh, 45 below range or so, Yukon Flats, Northway, but then uh, lows uh, only in the, uh, the uh, lower teens there along the western coast and then uh, warming along the west coast and into the western interior 20s and some readings getting up near 32 say at Imanac and then looking at Saturday morning lows uh, upper Kuskokwim uh, River Basin uh, up toward McGrath, 28 to 30 below, where skies stay clear. Coming up, though, there uh, along the coastline into the teens, and certainly readings above freezing as you get to the tip of the Alaska Peninsula on a, into the Aleutians. High temperature Saturday afternoon behind that front into the 40s across uh, the Aleutian chain, but in cr climbing up to, say, uh, mid-upper 20s along the southwest coast, or Makoriuk, uh, Nunavik Island there just uh, west of Bettles. And then for Sunday morning, the lows continue to improve across the southwest interior, remaining above freezing along the Alaska Peninsula on out into the Aleutians with uh, temperatures Sunday afternoon uh, getting back up to around or a bit above freezing along the coast and certainly above freezing as you get southwest of King Salmon along the Alaska Peninsula into the 40s, uh, Dutch Harbor, especially on out toward Adak and uh, areas of the central Aleutians. And let's quick look at uh, the temperature outlook. As I showed you yesterday, uh, we still expect below normal temperatures uh, out over south central areas along the northern Gulf Coast, but not as cold as it has been. 
And that's not good news because that means snow and we're going to have some moisture coming in off the bearing and at times being aided by moisture coming up from the Gulf so we could see above normal precipitation, especially interior areas from the southwest to the east central part of the state. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Well, it's now time for your aviation weather, and if you are planning a flight this weekend, Saturday into Sunday, it's going to be tough, especially in the western part of the state as a major winter storm will be impacting the region. In the east, bitter cold. We have an Arctic high pressure center with the central pressures in the range of uh, 1040 to nearly 1050 millibars that'll be centered over the Yukon, and that's going to bring bitter cold temperatures, 40 to as cold as 50 below Saturday morning, in through portions of the Yukon flats. Uh, otherwise, look for IFR conditions continue continuing throughout much of the southwest third of the state as a result of the initial front that came on inland uh, on Friday. And we're watching yet another storm system, a powerful low riding along the coast of Japan and the Kanchakta coast with a, another frontal system that'll be working its way eastward across the bearing. And we'll see moisture ahead of that along with increasing winds. So IFR conditions will be rather uh, pervasive there from the middle Yukon back out through the, uh, the west side of the state, including Nunavik. Uh, and uh, St. Lawrence Islands all the way through the central bearing and western half of the Aleutians. For Sunday morning, we could see some areas of IFR along the intercoastal mountains of the Panhandle and the inner waterways, but otherwise uh, IFR conditions there along the west and extending southwestward into the central Aleutians. That's all associated with this windy frontal system that's going to send a surge of moisture in through uh, the west and southwestern parts of the state and that's going to mean heavy snow blizzard conditions winds could gust as high as 60 miles an hour along the coast and then those snows are going to spread inland throughout the southwest and west interiors as well as in up through Cook Inlet as we get into uh, later Sunday and Sunday night and as a result, we expect widespread IFR conditions across the uh, at least southwestern half of the state. Anatovic Pass on Saturday will see uh, VFR conditions hold as will add again. Further south and west though, Lake Clark and Merrill generally am VFR, but on the west side, look for the entrances to become IFR as we go through Saturday and am VFR in the east entrance. Same thing, Rainy Pass. Uh, becoming IFR at the west entrance, otherwise general MVFR should hold through the day. And then for Saturday, Windy Pass will see VFR conditions in the morning give way to the MVFR conditions. Isabel, as well as Mentasta, should be able to hold on to VFR conditions on Saturday as a result of that big high pressure over the Yukon, as will Tanita. And as we drop a little further south and west to uh, Portage, VFR conditions are expected to hold, though you could encounter some MVFR conditions out over uh, Prince William Sound the further east you slide. And Chilkoot and White will see a brief uh, improvement to VFR for a time at least Saturday morning, giving way to MVFR conditions Saturday afternoon. Freezing level, surface freezing level runs uh, uh, between Haida Gwaii and the Panhandle, and then uh, runs out along the northern Pacific Gulf interface across the tip of the Alaska Peninsula to between St. Matthew and St. George, St. Paul Islands with a little bump upwards to two and 4,000 feet there through the eastern half of the Aleutians out ahead of that uh, strong frontal system. Best chance of icing Saturday will be way out in the west, left side of your screen between four, 16,000 feet. The western half of the Aleutians with that strong frontal system, otherwise pockets of three to 8,000 feet there in the west, as well as parts of the Panhandle and between three and 12,000 feet out through the southwestern and uh, Gulf and Northern Pacific. Core of strongest upper level winds, uh, we have a, a jet core of 140 knots uh, just uh, south of the Gulf there in the North Pacific from the southwest, but the main one is way out to the west there, the left side of your screen, 190 knot westerly jets there associated with this next storm system out uh, entering into the uh, lower and southwestern Bering and western Aleutians, dropping down to 9,000 feet, a broad core of 50 to 70 knot winds across much of the uh, lower Bering and the Aleutians. And then as we look at uh, 3,000 foot level, we have that uh, low pressure there along the uh, Kanchakta Peninsula with strong winds at 3,000 feet from the central bearing down through uh, the central and western portions of the Aleutian of between 50 and 85 knots. This is going to translate to severe turbulence potential, especially around uh, Adka and Adak westward. 
from the surface to 3,000 feet, and then also areas of considerable moderate turbulence will be possible extending up into the Alaska Peninsula, as well as in parts of the uh, northwest from St. Lawrence Island into the western uh, Seward Peninsula on up into uh, the western portion of the Brooks Range between the surface at 3,000 feet. So that's your aviation weather. If you are planning a flight, certainly check the latest uh, conditions and forecast, and if you are able to get out, have a safe flight. Welcome back to another edition of Alaska Weather Facts. I'm Dave Snyder, and joining me again is Cindy Preller. She's the Tsunami Program Manager for Alaska Region's National Weather Service. Thanks again for joining us, Cindy. Thanks for having me back, Dave. Sure thing. And I, I love saying Tsunami Program Manager for Alaska's National Weather Service because that's not weather. Why is the Tsunami Program part of the National Weather Service? Well, it's because the Weather Service absolutely rocks at warning people for every kind of, you know, devastating natural hazard. Mm -hmm. the, the mission of the Weather Service is to protect life and property. And so how does the Tsunami Warning Center in Palmer, Alaska, which is a very unique office, again, within the Weather Service, it's not weather, how do those folks help us protect life and property? The National Tsunami Warning Center in Palmer is a national warning center mm -hmm. and we analyze seismic traces 24-7 okay. all around the world. So when there's an earthquake anywhere on the planet, we see it and mm -hmm. analyze it within minutes. Within minutes, and, within and there's minutes. actually a goal to have it under, was it five minutes? Mm -hmm. we, if there okay. is a tsunami warning to be issued for continental America, okay. um, yeah, we must get that out or wow. shoot to get that out in five minutes. Okay. Now, that, that's not something I have ever learned to do, so I know it would be a struggle for me to do that under <laughs> probably hours, but it is fascinating to watch, and, and the, the office is open on a regular basis for tours, right? Absolutely. Come by okay. Friday. Okay. Yep, every right. Friday at 1, 2, and 3 p.m., and they're open public free tours. And they're, it's the most interesting place on the planet. You really should check it out. Okay, and, and the, the, the office team is made up of of people that are earth scientists, not meteorologists or atmospheric scientists. Talk about some of the types of people that work there. Right, we are out of place in our <laughs> National Weather Service, but um, yeah, we are geologists, uh -huh. geophysicists, um, oceanographers, we even have an astrophysicist on board, mm -hmm. uh, uh, computer software architects, yeah. um, electronic technicians that are brilliant and innovative, our software is all written in-house, our instrumentation is designed in-house. Okay. So it's a really, really unique place, and it's just a couple handfuls of people that work there. So Sure. Yeah. One of my favorite ways to get a tsunami alert message is on Twitter. Right. And I can follow the, the Twitter address, and we'll put that up on the screen for you there. But it's usually a very quick message that tells you initially what the magnitude of an earthquake could be and about where its uh, epicenter was. Mm -hmm. What are some of the other ways that you can get that alert message? Well, I, Twitter's my favorite, too. Yeah. And you don't even need a Twitter account to receive right. it. So you, it right. just comes in like an SMS message. But mm -hmm. um, you can also receive it via email, mm -hmm. weather radio, of course, mm -hmm. um, the crawler on your television screen, mm -hmm. uh, on the Internet, Google Alerts, right. um, marine radio if you're out in harbors and boats. Mm -hmm. Actually, marine radio is probably... Yeah, that's a good one. That's our partnership with the Coast Guard. We're really yeah. grateful for that, yeah. absolutely. But there's a variety of ways in dissemination. Okay. And locally, excuse me, I'm sorry, but sure. locally in the communities, the sirens will go off as right. well. Right, right. So lots of different ways to get that very important message very quickly mm -hmm. when, that, when that matters to you. Uh, one of the ways that the, the warning center practices with communities is a test on a, on a yearly basis, right? Right. How does that work? Thanks for bringing that up. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a controversial issue, but it's super important mm -hmm. to help us warn better and really serve Alaskans. Um, so the week of March 27th, the commemoration of the 1964 right. event, for that week we have a Tsunami Preparedness Week every mm -hmm. year. We like communities to get out and do drills and practice and, and do everything we can to raise awareness. And right. part of that is a live code test where we actually issue the warning message live and we activate the um, emergency alert system, which means sirens go off, the mm -hmm. TV crawler, 
happens and it's a test, 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 test. We're and doing everything that would normally happen without the real threat of the tsunami, just to, right. to, to practice as much as possible. Right, and this okay. is a major partnership with the State of Alaska, mm -hmm. Department of Homeland Security and Emergency Management, the Emergency Operations Center, right. and the Alaska Broadcasters Association. Without the media, we wouldn't be able to do this. So right. the three groups really work tightly together to mm -hmm to do our best to warn, educate the public that right. this is happening mm -hmm. so they don't wonder and get scared about it. Um, it has been remarkable what we've learned. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, it pretty much breaks somewhere every time, sure. but then we fix it and right. it gets better. So a, a quick example is just a few years ago, mm -hmm. we used to, when we issued a message, it would activate the entire state. Right. Right? I mean, Kotzebue, Nome, mm -hmm. Bethel, everybody would be in tsunami warning. And so now we can uh, regionalize it to where the actual event is taking place. Right. That's pretty huge. Right, right. So identifying points of failure and also points of success and making sure we continue down that successful path so that folks are warned as quickly and accurately as possible. Absolutely. And, mm -hmm. you know, to get our communities involved to prep themselves, prep their businesses, right. prep their tourism, prep their schools, you know, just make this a, a, an annual thing they need to be doing. Right, so as citizens uh, wanting to be prepared, we should be prepared to learn more about that test that's uh, happening usually toward the end of March every year. Right, and you should be happy that it's happening. Right. Instead of upset. Definitely be right. happy that it's happening. Right, just, just as we test tornado sirens in tornado country, we also have to test the tsunami program as well. Right, because there isn't enough time. You know, for right. a local tsunami, the wave will arrive in less than two minutes. So it's super important that people know what to do. Very good. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, Cindy, thank you so much for helping us know more about the Tsunami Ready Program and the test and the Tsunami Warning Center. It's a very unique and very important job in the National Weather Service that is just fascinating to me every time I visit the office. So. It's the only one for the continent. You really should come check it out. It's an international effort. Yes. Wonderful stuff. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you, Dave. And thanks for joining us for another edition of Alaska Weather Facts. I'm Dave Snyder. We'll see you next time. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back and looking at the sea ice edge today, we have extensive ice cover along the Arctic and Northwest coast through the Chukchi Sea and uh, lower uh, portion of the Bering uh, Strait. And as a result, we are gonna see some stronger winds, not just with the frontal system that came on through, but a low pressure system right out where the tip there of Eastern Russia. And a strong frontal system is going to create uh, some stronger offshore wind over the weekend. So expect some shifting and movement of the ice along the shoreline there, especially uh, the northwest Arctic coast down through uh, the outer areas of uh, the Seward Peninsula. And as we look at the southwest coast, the ice will also be shifting around as the winds are going to pick up from the south ahead of this front and then turn to the west uh, and southwest behind it later in the weekend. So all in all, we are expecting gale and storm force winds, so expect uh, ice conditions could be changing and there could be some dangerous shifting around, just be aware of it. Otherwise, for Saturday, marine forecast for the inner canals of the Panhandle. Winds, at least through the northern half, will be outflow winds from the north and northwest, around 20 knots, waves three, four feet. And then the shore, uh, along the shore, generally westerly winds crag up through uh, Sitka and Gustavus around 15 knots, waves six to seven feet. And then offshore easterly winds there at Yakutat uh, at about uh, 15 knots with five foot waves. On Sunday, uh, we'll see uh, winds somewhat variable in the inner canals around 15 knots with waves a few feet. And then along the outer coast of the Gulf, uh, southwest uh, to south winds around 15 knots and waves four to six feet. Across the uh, south central areas, uh, we're looking for winds out of the north, uh, Prince William Sound with some gusts up to 25 knots with colder outflow winds. And then winds uh, at the mouth of uh, Cook Inlet, uh, generally out of the northwest there at uh, 20 knots and waves coming down to five feet compared to the stronger winds of the past couple of days. But with the next storm system approaching from the west and southwest, we're going to see winds picking up from the southeast on Sunday. And uh, we expect uh, at least 40 to 45 knot gale force winds, especially off the Kenai and there at the mouth of Cook Inlet with waves anywhere from around 10 to 13 feet. And for Saturday, uh, or in the vicinity of Kodiak Island, uh, winds variable in Shelikoff Strait, three foot waves and uh, otherwise north northwest winds 20 to 25 knots waves generally five to maybe nine feet off of the uh, the coastline of the pan uh, of the uh, southwest peninsula uh, on the 
on the Pacific side, and then on the Bering side, northwest winds 15 to 20 knots, waves 6 to 12 feet. Things pick up, though, for Sunday. Head of the next frontal system, we are looking for south and southwest gale to storm force winds between 40 and 50 knots, waves building to around or just over 20 feet uh, offshore there on the North Pacific side, and uh, 11 to 17 feet, especially there north of Cold Bay. Across the Aleutian chain on Saturday, winds are going to be picking up, uh, especially west of Atka and Ada. We expect uh, 40 to 50 knot winds, so gale to storm force winds from the south and waves uh, getting back up near 20 feet west of ADAC. And then for Sunday, uh, after that frontal system passes through, look for generally 35 to 40 knot gales. There could be some storm force winds still south of Dutch Harbor and waves will generally be up around 20 to 25 feet on the North Pacific side and 18 to 20 feet on the Bering side. Looking at the West Coast, strong south winds 25 to 35 knots there for Saturday. Let me shift the ice around, so keep that in mind if you're thinking of heading out. And then on Sunday, even stronger winds come in. We're looking at uh, gale force winds of 40 to 45 knots over the ice and upwards to 50 knots around St. Matthew with waves building to around 25 feet or so. Along the Arctic coast, winds will be southeast to south, 15 to 20 knots with the ice there, so there could be a little shifting. Stronger winds, the lower Chukchi Sea through the Bering Strait, uh, generally around uh, 25 to 30 knots, though some higher winds there off of Point Hope and Cape Lisburn, upwards to 35 knots. And then on Sunday, as that strong low pressure is located over eastern Russia, Winds will be out of the uh, east-southeast along the Arctic coast, generally east-southeast going down the Chukchi Sea coast, with uh, storm force winds upwards to 50 knots out of Kotzebue Sound. Again, so that ice will shift around. And there's the situation with the map overnight. The first uh, windy front has come on shore and weakened to a trough, but then as we go into Saturday, we have a couple weak low pressures in the western Gulf, but more importantly, the strong low pressure along the Kamchatka coast with a strong front uh, working its way eastward through the Aleutians and slamming ashore with winter storm conditions along the west and southwest coasts spreading inland on Sunday. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Thank you.